Hello everybody, it's John here, and uh, winter is kind of long, and I spent way too much time uh, watching bee videos on uh, YouTube. Or, so uh, after doing that, uh, I decided to try to do something a little bit different this year, and I ended up building a layin's hive. So I'm still a top bar beekeeper. I love them to death. Uh, they work really good for what I want to do, uh, but I just thought for the heck of it, I've been watching a few guys and uh, they sound interesting, the Lands Hive. It's kind of the same concept of a top bar hive. You uh, have one level and everything's contained inside the box. So that I kind of like that part of it. And it's, it does have frames though, more like your Langstroth hives, but they're a lot different. And uh, I listened to a guy named, I think it's Dr. Leo Shereskin. Uh, HorizontalHive.com is his website. He has uh, free plans and you can also purchase them there also. So uh, check that out. And he talks about uh, this style of hive. Uh, his concept is basically, I believe, uh, only getting into the hive a couple times a year. Uh, so he, he's one of those that just allows the bees to do what they do. Uh, very interesting, so you might check him out. I also watched, I think it was B-Boy Bill, and he builds these lay-ins hives. Uh, he has some really neat ideas. And I think the other fellow might have been Enjoy Beekeeping. Uh, check him out too. So what I did, I took all three of those guys, their plans, their ideas, and of course I have to put my own spin on it. So I designed my own hive uh, using the little bits and pieces from all those guys. Uh, my dimensions and stuff are a little different than you might get on the Dr. Leo's uh, website. Uh, but I, again, used what worked good for me and as far as the wood goes, uh, the easiest to build. I'm not a, a woodworker by no means. I don't have all the tools I need. So I did a lot of things that B-Boy Bill does and uh, ended up making these hive, this hive here, and actually I made two, uh, just to see how they would work and what they do. Uh, so let me show it to you here real quick and kind of go through it. Uh, first of all, uh, I ended up just putting two holes in it uh, and then I put the O's, these little metal discs. I think you can see them online. You can find them easily uh, just to kind of close it up. I thought that might be a little easier. Uh, this is Western uh, Red Cedar, I believe. Uh, it has a funny tint to it here, but what I ended up using was Echo wood treatment. Uh, it's basically, I think, a mineral, they say. It's not supposed to be safe. Uh, and you just mix it up in water and you paint it on. And I would put a couple coats on it just because I had plenty. Uh, and it kind of turns the wood green at the moment. It's a, kind of a shady green gray. But when you get it out in the sun and the rain washes it a little bit, it's supposed to kind of be more of a natural barn wood look. So it's kind of a silvery pat patina maybe. Uh, I probably wouldn't have had to do that, but to just for the heck of it, I, I put it on there to give it a try. Uh, I use the standard legs here uh, that I do on my top bars. Uh, basically, I built it and, and mounted them to the sides so I don't have to worry about make, making a stand separately for them. Uh, the only thing is when you bring it out to the bee yard, you do have to level it with some kind of stones or whatever you want to put underneath it to, to kind of balance it. So. Uh, let me open it up here. I put a couple latches on it to hold the lid down. Uh, this is just a, a frame built lid out of one before and I put a little insulation in the top and uh, then I use a, a sheet metal top. I'm fortunate I can uh, bar a guy's uh, brake and, and put some sheet metal on it so it makes a nice sturdy top. This is what you end up with as far as the frames go. And uh, the volume inside this hive, inside the frames here, is a, figures up to be about 20 gallons. Uh, and there's 17 bars. And uh, the 18th bar is, is, a, is a divider board. So with, with oh, that amount of room, 20 gallons, that's a, usually that's a little bit bigger than my top bar hives I've built. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. Uh, also, I uh, 
took one of the guy's ideas and uh, I cut some uh, starter strips here out of some uh, foundation, plastic foundation. And then as you can see here, it's yellow a little bit. I put my own beeswax on it, melted it and coated it on there. So this is the frame. Uh, let me bring you a little closer to look at the inside. This is what uh, the inside looks like. As you can see, the frames are there and there's uh, supposed to be about a 3 8 inch B space on each side uh, against the outside wall. And then inside here again, uh, I don't believe in myself the screen bottom boards, so, but I do like putting a little bit of a, a vent in there. And again, most of the time they just use it as a garbage disposal. Uh, I, that's right underneath the brood. I've got two of them in here, one here and one farther down. Uh, by each entrance hole, uh, I have the vent on the inside there. So what that does, it has a plastic cap underneath there and it catches anything. And if I want to put oil in there, uh, it's a good way to catch uh, hive beetles. So as you can see here, that's uh, kind of what I came up with. One other thing that I did do here uh, a lot of the plans show that the hive, uh, the bars here, are recessed. And uh, to me, I like the top bar concept where the bars just set on top. To me, it's a lot easier to uh, maybe take the bars here and put a pry bar underneath it, a uh, hive tool, and then pop them up and lift them out. And the only thing is I do have to then, whenever I put them back in there, make sure that they are flush with the outside of the hive. Uh, but I do like that, that uh, way that works a lot easier. It seems like when I watch the videos, a lot of people struggle trying to get down and getting their hive tools in here to, to pop out the frame. So that's what I did there. Also, I tried something a little different this time uh, on my top bars. Occasionally, as the wood swells and shrinks in the, during the year, the bars can get tight, and I sometimes have to put a little spacer in here to fill in the gap on my top bar hives. So here, what I did this time is uh, I made an adjustable ends on each side, and all you gotta do is undo the wing nuts, and this board will float in and out about a half an inch. And it'll also do that on this other end too, in case I was wanting to use that as my entrance. Uh, either way, it allows uh, the float a little bit because I like to always make sure it's tight. Whenever my frames are all in here, uh, I want it to all be nice and snug and tight. Back to the outside here again. Uh, underneath, uh, I built this little bitty bracket uh, and it, has wing nuts that it raises and lowers and it's it, I can easily underneath slide in this little cap and that's where again I put the oil uh, for the hive beetles and just to check and see if there's any varroa mites and stuff it's a good spot they'll if they fall off they clean them and throw them in here for some reason it's easier farm uh, so that's kind of neat and I'll have this on uh, mostly in August is when I put my oil traps in and when I seem to have a few more hive beetles so otherwise uh, I'll just lower this a little bit and give them ventilation if they need it or keep the cap in there. And then in the winter time, I take the caps out because I can, that sometimes they can get water in them from condensation inside the hive. So I don't want that to build up in there. And I usually end up using like an SOS pad here and I cut it to fit my hole and uh, I'll have this cut out and a couple of those in there. And in the winter time, I'll close this up and and it allows a little bit of uh, ventilation, maybe. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's porous, uh, but any moisture that gets in there, it drips out, can get it and then uh, dry out from underneath and not just stay in the bottom of the hive. So with that, I've not really had any trouble water, you know, showing water signs inside the, the, my top bar hives or hopefully this one too. The one last thing that I, I like to try to do in the winter time, I put a, a foil quarter inch bubble wrap, double bubble wrap on here on top. Uh, since I have a one before top on this, I didn't see a need to build it any bigger, but there is enough room in there that I can put some of the inch, uh, I don't know, styrofoam board or the insulation board 
I can cut it and just set it on top here too, underneath the, underneath the lid. And once I close it up then, there should be three quarters of an inch, quarter double bubble, and then an inch of the insulation board. And then there's still a little bit of a gap around the outside here that there's ventilation hose on each end, of course, of my lid so that air can get in and out. Uh, like I say, uh, this is something new I wanted to try just for the heck of it. And of course, you, when you build a beehive, you need to at least of the same style in case I need to borrow uh, uh, some brood frames from my, another hive. I can easily put it in here then. There we are then, uh, put it all back together. It's ready to set outside. Uh, I'm building a new bee yard this year to keep the bees a little farther away from the house and the grandkids. So it's gonna be a little farther out and I'm gonna put these two uh, Lands hives in there and, and then maybe one of my top bar hives also. Uh, I think I've told you about everything I did on it. I hope you get some ideas and maybe try to build something similar to it yourself. Uh, please check out some of my old videos. Uh, it's kind of gone over the past couple years of every time I ha experience something new, I try to make a video of it so I'll remember it and I can look back at it in the future and, and see what just happened. So as we deal with this uh, Lands Hive, I'll make a few videos of it, show you how it progresses, and maybe at the end of the year, give you my thoughts comparing it to a top bar hive. And as always, take care, get ready for the beekeeping season coming here in a few weeks, and God bless.